All right, let's go. Okay. This is uh, session number 14. We are on a seven day prayer journey with the Lord. The first seven days of the month of June. We are heading to Joshua chapter, Joshua chapter one, verse number seven. Let's go there. Go ahead, the reader for tonight. Okay. Joshua chapter 1, verse 7. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law, which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. Okay, stop there. Stop there. Let us see. Start again to read that. Stop there. This is interesting. This is interesting. I'm going to tell you why. Hmm. There's some word that was used for be strong and courageous. It's also used here in the Hebrew Bible. Be thou steadfast and uh, be thou resolute. Yep. Why? You see, what we see here is this. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that steadfastness and resoluteness be focused. In fact, he's telling him, be orderly. Put order in your life so that you cannot be carried away by every whims of emotion. Have some order in your life. Why? Why do we need order here? Wherever you find order, you find honor. Why is he asking him to be focused, to concentrate, to put all of his being <clears throat> into what he's doing? Number one, if he does that, then he will have the power, the ability to observe. The word there is observe. To observe. When you observe a thing, it means you do it. Let your way be known to God that you put this thing, this thing is what occupies your life. Your worship of God. In fact, the word there, observe there, means devotion. Your devotion becomes a lifestyle. See, he's saying, stop sleeping and start acting. Put action into your word. 
there is a side of God that is not just talking about action. Observe to do according to all. He did not say some. There is no option here. According to all. All the law. So you see, observe, do, all the law. Which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. He's talking about the law that we find from Genesis to Deuteronomy. And also I am made to believe that Moses also gave him instructions how leaders, how rulers, how royalties are to behave. The law of success, the law of devotion, the law of honor. That's why I said to, to all of you, have somewhere where you go to pray. Have an altar. If you cannot have an altar, send money and you will be connected to my altar here. Observation has to do with something you do on a daily basis. Something you do all the time. Worship, reading the word, fasting, Sacrifices of money and love, prayers, these are things that you must do. You, you must, these are part of what we call devotion. What God is looking for, what Jesus is looking for is devotion. Before Moses departed, he talked to, he talked to Joshua. He gave him some laws. He also reminded him about the laws of God that God has spoken through various times through Moses. Keep them. Observe them. This, um, this, this is your life. I mean, let me put it this way. God is your life. Excuse me. His ways, his word, his promises, his statutes, his ordinances. That's your life. Observe your life. This, this thing is your life. Jesus is your life. The Holy Ghost is your life. Be devoted to them because your life is in them. Continue, my dear. Turn not from it to the right hand or the left. There you go. Stop there. If you observe the devotion of the Word of God, let, let me explain something here. That is why somebody like me is needed to interpret the Word. It's not everybody who is gifted in the interpretation, in the exegesis, in the amplification of the Word. The reason is that the word can easily be twisted. The word of God can be used to kill people. I just want you to know this. It can be used to con people. It can be used to send people to hell. There are words of God that we can no longer observe in our generation. Like killing women and removing babies from their bellies, killing them. I mean, it's all there in the Bible. <laughs> they say there's a side of the Bible that is nasty. I just have to be very frank with you, that I myself, I don't like it. There are some destruction that people were commanded to do as part of the laws. And that has to do with the culture and intelligence and the civilization of the people of that age. Our society today, we don't need it. We've grown above that kind of mentality and that kind of structures. 
And some people want to go back to the Old Testament to bring back Old Testament things into the New. No, no, no. We will not allow that. Uh huh. You get a divorce, you cannot be married. Where do you get that? They're trying to go back to the Old Testament to put women in perpetual widowhood forever. Even young women who should get back into a marriage, have children, have a family, get a job, they now live in mourning throughout their lifetime. That is not fair. There are wars that we shouldn't get ourselves involved in, and there are times that we should go to war in order to get what belongs to us. I'm talking about physical warfare. I don't care whether people die. There, there, is, there is a place for war. There are some laws that we can no longer apply today. You cannot apply it. Somebody injured your eyesight, they bring the person and they, and they give you something for you to poke the person's eye and make the person to go blind too. The person busted your teeth. They bring the person and knock some teeth off him. They injured you, they cut their hand. I mean, all kind of stuff that I don't even want to talk about. They are dead in the Bible. But the Judeo-Christian people do not practice those things anymore. Women must be covered from head to toes. That was in the Old Testament days and all of that. We don't practice those things. How are you going to know the person you are talking to at the airport? How? There are things that, there are things that we, we do not... That there are things that Jesus said that he is speaking figuratively, metaphorically, symbols. And people take it as, ah, that is, that is the law. And they, and they run after it and they become crazy about it. I don't, I don't mess with those kind of Christians. I do not. That's why there are a lot of evangelical Christians, including apostolic healing tongue talkers. I don't mess with them. I don't, I don't fool around with them because they are extreme. They are, they are extremists. I do not need those kind of people around me. I don't need their money. I don't need their lifestyle. There are some Christians who are very Republican or very Democrat in nature. I don't like them. I don't need any of them. Because they will be seeing their politician and their leader doing wrong and they turn the other side. The same people who will preach the Bible, why you shouldn't do that? So there's so much, if there is anything God hates in America today and why I will not... <laughs> Why I am afraid that God might wipe out a lot of Christians is because of their hypocrisy. And once you give the church people money, they look the other way. In fact, they interpret the Bible differently to fit in with the sinfulness of that person who has given them money. The buffalo mentality. Everybody on the run. They cannot challenge their leaders when they do wrong. They cannot confront them. They are cowed. That's not the kind of leadership and law that God is telling Joshua here. That's not that kind. We are not asked, we are not called to follow leaders just like that. That's not the way God does his business. Look at the life of Moses and Abraham and Samson and the rest of them. They all challenged God. They told him, is it the way you deal with your servants? Even God, when he approached Moses for Moses to go on a journey back to Egypt, he said, no, I'm not going. Doesn't mean that because God said it that you must go and do it. You must run. Ask, ask all the questions you need. You need to get all the specifics, the answers before you go ahead.
Abraham said to God, will the God, the maker of the universe, not do right? God, look at the way they prayed. They didn't beg. They talked back with God and challenged God and told God, is it not how you should operate? Moses said to him, if you kill all these Israelites in the wilderness, other nations are watching you. They will say that you tricked them, you, you conned them, and brought them out of Egypt in order to come and kill them in the wilderness. That's what they will say. And you will not be better than the, the, the blood-tested gods of the, of the heathens. And what did the Bible say? God changed his mind when he heard Moses said that. God is waiting to see whether you can talk to him and make him see reason. You do not get what you deserve. You get what you are able to negotiate. <laughs> are you guys getting what I'm saying? You get what you are able to negotiate. That's why you see people who qualify, have great education. They don't get money. And you see people who understand the game of life and able to negotiate. And they get everything. Hmm. Continue reading, please. That thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Look at this. this Look at this. Look at this. We are still in verse 7. He said, uh, Moses, my servant, has commanded thee. Then continue from there. Turn not. Listen to this. Turn not from it to the right. Okay. To the right hand or to the left. <clears throat> that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Wherever you are located, you will prosper. How do you prosper? Focus. Concentration. Don't let no human being make you deviate from right or, or left from what God has asked you to do in life. Well, let me tell you the greatest weapon of Satan, I know. The greatest weapon of Satan is not to cause you to make you to go and sin. The greatest weapon of Satan, right from the time that he became the devil, when Lucifer, the other side of him, become somebody awful, has been always one thing. This is his greatest weapon. To, to discourage. His greatest weapon is the gift of persuasion to discouragement. Let's write that down. The greatest weapon of Satan is persuasion to discouragement, to make you give up something very valuable. Many of you went into marriage and you gave up a lifestyle that will have accomplished something before you got married. You gave it up for something that is not worth it. The desire of Satan is always to persuade you to discouragement. It's the biggest gift of his that he carries. And if you allow him, he will anoint you with it and you will, everything about you will collapse. Why? Because you are discouraged. The second weapon of Satan, I hope you are writing this down, is sadness, unhappiness. That's the second biggest weapon. So while you are looking at sins, you have no idea of the real thing behind the sin. The first is to persuade you to give up something, to be discouraged so that you give up something. The second is sadness, to make you unhappy, sad. And all this thing is done so that you cannot focus and prosper. <laughs> I hope whoever is writing it tonight for me is taking note. You should put it that way. These two things, discouragement and sadness, are put together so that you cannot focus and prosper. 
that's why God brought me into the lives of into the life of many of you. Because if you remain in that marriage the way it has been without me being involved in your life, you cannot focus, you cannot prosper. Why? You have no peace, you have no concentration, you have no focus, you are sad. That's why God brought me into many of your lives. So that you will not die. Because discouragement and sadness lead to death. Period. Please write that down. Discouragement and sadness leads to death. I'm talking about physical death. Because it leads to all forms of sicknesses and all of that. That's why I wonder that's a major key. Every problem. Every problem that leads to a disaster always begin with discouragement and sadness. Every problem, please write that down for me. Every problem that leads to disaster always begin with discouragement and sadness. See what, see what he did to Eve. Discourage her about what God said so that she started to question whether God was really right or wrong here. Or God is going, is preventing them from having the best. Will discourage you from the world. Discourage you from what are you going to get out of all of this. At what time in your life do you think you will ever get this or get that? Discouragement. Look at what all the friends and the wife of Job said to, her, said to him. Discouragement. That's what it is. And most of the time, when when the devil wants to use somebody to speak to you concerning something great you want to attempt, it's always to give you the bad side of it to discourage you. When one depends a bad side of that thing, you get discouraged, and Satan comes in and stops that thing. Already God has told you what he's going to do for you. But then come discouragement, then sadness. You can't sing, you can't dance, you can't function, and the devil take over and stop that thing. That's why we had that prayer. The prayer to stop hindrances. Because the greatest powers behind hindrances, I hope you're writing it down for me. The greatest power behind hindrances is discouragement and sadness. And when you are discouraged and you are sad, you've given up your power, you've given up your right as a prince or princess of the kingdom of God. You've given up your right. I hope you're getting it tonight. You're getting it. It's in. You need to prosper. The power to prosper is focus. Write that down. The power to prosper is just one word. Focus. Detail. The power to prosper, to be rich, to have money, material resources, spiritual power, everything has to do with focus, focus, focus. Concentrate, 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 focus. Stay focused, stay focused if you want to hit the target. And what is the target? Prosper. It's about prosperity. I hope you are seeing it here. Pastors will tell you prosperity is not, oh, I don't like this prosperity gospel. I don't like, do you hear God saying to Joshua, so that you may prosper in your location. Everywhere where you enter, you prosper. Look at it here. Prosperity is here. Are you guys seeing it? Verse number seven, Joshua chapter one. Let me shout it out. Prosperity is in the Old Testament. So that you may prosper. Everywhere where you enter, prosperity follows you. If you, if you are watching this broadcast or listening, I want you to touch, touch your, your head, touch, touch your heart. Touch your belly and shout, my name from today is prosperity. Say it. My name from today is prosperity. Yep. 
My name from today is prosperity. From today is prosperity. That's it. Whoever doesn't like that can go to hell. Because hell is a place for people who do not want to prosper. They don't want to prosper with God. That's why they don't want God. That's why they want Satan. They don't want to prosper with the kingdom of heaven. That's why they want the kingdom of hell. They don't want to prosper. They want to be broke on the earth. And you think when you go to heaven, God will make you rich there. <laughs> you have no idea how heaven operates. You are going there to begin. You are going there to begin. To begin like a little boy. <laughs> I want to end this broadcast here. I'm giving everybody two, three to five minutes. Find something to drink. Find something to eat. Um, bring your food, only mute mute the phone while you are eating so that you don't make me hungry, you know? Bring your food and be eating, just mute the phone, eating quietly, drinking something, because we've broken the fast, then we'll be back in two, three minutes, we will be back here, and we will continue verse number eight. Yep, we'll look at Verse number eight, very, very important. And I hope after that we will go for tonight. And the readers for tonight will stay because we will continue this broadcast until either your phone systems died, the stream, the U stream died, <laughs> and they will go home. This is interesting. So we will come back to start verse number eight. Eternal Jesus, eternal Jesus, thank you. We ask for the spirit and gift of focus. Pour upon us the spirit and gift of focus that no power, no ancient authorities of darkness or voices or atmosphere or situation or anything will throw us off from focus, from focus, from focus. Amen. Amen.